In this video lesson, we will introduce quadratic functions. So first to review. By now we should all know what linear functions are. Some examples of linear functions could be y equals 2x minus 1, or y equals negative 2x, or y equals 7x minus 5, y equals negative 3x plus 2. Anything with a number times x plus a number, all of these are going to be linear functions. And all of them have the graph, which is a line. That's why they're called the linear. So now, what is a quadratic function? Well, an example of a quadratic function could be y equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. The difference is that there's an x squared now. A good way to remember that a quadratic function has a square in it is the following. If we have x squared, well, Imagine a square, which is a quadrilateral, something that has four sides. Well, quad in quadrilateral is the same as the quad in quadratic function. So that's why they're called quadratic functions, is because for it to be a quadratic function, there's got to be an x squared somewhere in there. So now we can take a look at a few more examples of quadratic functions. Give me a moment to erase all of this. So some examples of quadratic functions could be y equals x squared minus 1, or y equals 2x squared plus x plus 1, or y equals negative 3x squared minus 2x plus 4. Or another example could be y equals negative 2x squared plus 5x plus 17. All of these have an x squared in there. So they're all quadratics. So what else could a quadratic equation a quadratic function look like? Well, for example, there's also y equals x minus 2 times x times x minus 3. The reason this is quadratic is because, well, first also another example, y equals x minus 1 squared plus 1. The reason these are both quadratic is because when you FOIL it out, when you multiply out the parentheses, you'll still get an x squared term. So there is a square. Same with the other example. x minus 1 squared is x minus 1 times x minus 1. And when you FOIL it, you'll get an x squared term. So these are also quadratic functions. So now, let's take a look at what the graph of a quadratic function looks like. The graph of a linear function is always a line. That we know. But what exactly does the graph of a quadratic function look like? Well, before we look at what it looks like, the name of the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola. This is how it's spelled. So just remember this name. That's what you call the graph of a quadratic function. Now we're going to take a look at a few parabolas. And all parabolas are similar to each other. They're not lines, not straight lines, but they all have things in common. 
So here we have y equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. Now notice it curves down and then goes back up. So some things quadratics have in common with lines, linear functions, is that they still have y and x intercepts. So here we have a y intercept 0, 3, because it's 3 above the origin. And there are two x intercepts. Lines only have one x intercept, but quadratics can have two. So in this case, we have two x intercepts. They're 1, 0, and 3, 0. Now, another important property of quadratics is that they can open upwards or open downwards. This one opens up. This is because the arrows that I've just drawn on, where the parabola continues on, it all goes up. Also, all parabolas have what's called a vertex. It's this point where the parabola curves and turns around. This is how you spell vertex. Vertices, which is the plural form of vertex, are very important in parabolas. This one has the coordinates 2, comma, negative 1. So we could write that the x-coordinate of the vertex equals 2, and the y-coordinate of the vertex equals negative 1. So now we're ready for the next example of a parabola. This time, the parabola is going to open down, so you'll have something to contrast with. So we have y equals negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. Again, we have a y-intercept. There it is, 0, 3. And we have two x-intercepts again. And in future video lectures, I will explain how to find all of these y-intercepts and x-intercepts in the vertex and when parabolas face up or when they open down. And this is all going to come later. But for now, it's good to just know what these things are and what they're called. So the x-intercepts are negative 1, 0, and 3, 0, as I've drawn them on the coordinate plane. Now again, this parabola opens downward. Let me erase these things. So as you can see, the two lines that go off to infinity, where I've drawn the arrows, they're pointing downwards. And in general, you can just see that it, it opens downwards. So that's what we would call it, a parabola that opens down. And we have a vertex again. It's the point where the parabola turns around. This time, the coordinates of the vertex are 1, 4. So the x-coordinate of the vertex, here I'm writing vertex again. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is 1, and the y-coordinate is 4. And that's all. I hope this helped you understand some basics about parabolas. Thank you for watching.